Come to me, all you that are weary and heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. These are the words of Jesus, our Lord, and the favorite passage of many believers, even non-believers, seek the meaning of these words of Jesus. Come to me and I will give you rest. All of us need rest, but what kind of rest? What is the rest that God gives to us? The rest that God gives to us is so rich and meaningful. Today, let us try to understand a measure of what God does to us when he gives rest. God rested on the seventh day, goes the Bible. In Genesis 2, chapter, uh, verse 3, God continued to work. He did the work of creation day by day, and he rested on the seventh day, which is called the Sabbath day. God found that all his creation was good. And so God's rest is not inactivity. God never takes rest. He continues to do his creation. He continues to do his power, mighty power. God is spirit and the spirit is like the wind and the light that does not take rest. The wind has no rest, so also the spirit has no rest, continuously moves about doing its work. God is spirit and therefore God continues to work. Therefore the believer in Jesus Christ is a believer in the spirit of Jesus Christ. So it is not an inactive rest. I recommend all listeners to read Hebrew chapter 4, versicles 1 to 12. There, the writer gives a very deep meaning, theological and biblical meaning of rest. What is rest in the biblical term? Now, God is the giver of rest. First of all, number one, the rest of satisfaction. When God has finished his work and he saw all that is good and he found great satisfaction. Everything he did was not wrong. Everything he did was perfect. And when he saw his creation, it was very good. And when you see your work, you have completed it, you have done it well, you have done it with satisfaction, moral satisfaction, physical satisfaction, whatever. You have done your work and you are satisfied with it. You found your work. It was so good. Therefore, that is a kind of rest. The rest of satisfaction. The rest of reward. That is a happy and contented. That is what we need. Even when we complete our work, whatever it is, field work or physical work, office work, you find your satisfaction. And even your moral conquest, you did not take bribe, you did not do unrighteousness, but your morality is so good that when you have finished something without moral uh, corruption, then you are satisfied then you find spiritual rest, the rest of satisfaction. Secondly, there is the rest of deliverance. You are in sin. You are in bondage. You are in captivity. You could not get out of it. And you found forgiveness. You found deliverance. And you found that you are freed from your sin, from your bondage, from your oppression. Then you find the rest of deliverance. That is how the Israelites found that from the slavery, from the bondage of sin, 
and from many evil captivities they were delivered by God. And so the God who is the Spirit delivers you and you are in the safe place. So the deliverance is also a rest. When you're freed from dangers, from evil power and from a whole moral captivity, evil, sinful attitude, you are delivered and so you find rest in God. Then we have also another, the presence of God, the deliverance of God's presence. I will walk with you in Exodus 33 verse 22. I will walk with you and my presence will reassure you. When God is present with us, when we are assured that God is with us, God is for us, God is present in our midst, then we have restfulness. This is a spiritual gift of rest. Then we also have, we can speak of more, and I give you one more, the fourth one, the rest of confidence, the rest of hope, and the rest of assurance. When we believe in God, that God will help us, God will take care of us, God will do the needful. Our uncertainties, what is going to happen now at this moment of coronavirus pandemic? We do not know what is going to happen, but we put our trust in God, we have confidence in God, and we hope in God, and we take rest. This also is a, a spiritual rest which God gives. Now, there are obstacles to finding God's rest. Number one is uh, disbelief in God. If you don't believe in God, then you are a restless person. You cannot rest. You are worried of so many things, of conspiring so many programs, so many schemes. You cannot rest because you don't believe in God. You don't have trust in God and you trust in money, you trust in some other power and you find yourself in restlessness. That is what disbelief in God also can cause you and hindrance to find the spiritual rest. Then the second is the disobedience to God's word. If we obey the word of God, if God says, do this or live like this, go this way and we reject his word and we find guilty, we find uh, sad and we rebelled against God, against God's will and then we are restless. Our spirit will not find rest because we have disobeyed God. If we disobey God's word, then we cannot find the rest that God gives. Therefore, again, another one, unrighteousness. This is the third element which will block you to find the divine rest. Your unholiness, your unrighteousness. In all things you do, you are not holy. You are not godly. You are not righteous. And therefore, your hands are smeared with evil inclinations. Your attitude, your purpose, your motivation, these are not holy, these are not righteous, these are not godly, and therefore you will not find rest if you go this way. So the condition now to find rest in God is what? We have to work. Work in the spirit of Christ. Find out the spirit of Christ and work in that line. If you toil, toil can be a burden. You are forced labor. So you work happily what you wish to do and you'll find rest while working and working. God continues to work. So do I. Jesus said, my father is at work and so I am. I am also at work continuously at work. Therefore, we have to find the spirit of Jesus and we must learn. For I am meek and humble of heart. My yoke is light and my burden is not heavy. Therefore, we have to find out the spirit of Jesus in order to labor, work and work. And don't take this uh, 
slavery and a forced labor time but happily as God is God is always at work we also must be at work and therefore the second point of finding the work in the condition of finding the work is the word of God keep on reading the word of God look for the will of God and do the will of God fulfilling the will of God is very important that is the food my happiness and my rest is to continuously work so that I do the will of God and when I find that I'm doing the will of God then I will find rest God will give me rest in Romans chapter 8 verse 9 it's beautiful here 8 9 says but you are not in the flesh you are in the spirit since the spirit of God dwells in you anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him so if you have the spirit of Christ we are a human body we have a human spirit therefore we must imitate our spirit must imitate the spirit of Christ now we jump into the pond with a heavy human body if we do not know how to swim we will sink and we will be drowned but if you if you know how to swim then you can float and come out alive so too we cannot be drowned by our weariness by our burden by our worries and cares in the spirit of Christ we can afloat our burden our weariness of life so the spirit of Christ in us is very important our spirit must learn and integrate ourselves with the spirit of Christ then we shall not be weary we shall not be heavily burdened we will learn from the lesson of Jesus to be meek and humble of heart and find rest in Jesus. Music